Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Gran Turismo 7. Today we're going to be showing you highlights from round 3 of the GT World Series Nations Race at Interlagos. We're going straight into qualifying, so if you do enjoy these videos, do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comment section how you got on, how many points you ended up with, what your race went like, did you have much chaos. Obviously as this race had a standing start, so the chances of that was quite high. So luckily for us in this qualifying session, you can see here, we get out the pits nice and early into pretty much P1. So you get out early, you've got no one in front of you. So you've got no risk of anyone ruining any of your laps. So we managed to get our first banker lap in there of a 14.3, which was all right. It wasn't the worst lap, it wasn't the greatest lap, but we knew there was potential to get into the 13s here. We just had to really hook a lap up. You can see on this lap here, we actually did quite a strong first sector going into the first sector. You're gonna see, I think we're actually gonna go purple here. We max those there on a 14-0 and we actually go purple on this sector there you can see quite a nice sector done through sector one and we managed to get quite a reasonable exit off of the corner there into this long sweeping right hand corner this is about just carrying the speed into fifth gear little lift a tiny dabble of brake get it into the apex get back on the throttle then straight onto the brakes and try and get this car into this apex and just get on that throttle as aggressively as you can early up shift to third gear here putting that power down could have been a lot more aggressive there there was definitely a little bit of time lost on that corner made the apex quite nicely there up into third gear reasonable grip on the acceleration coming out of the corner and now into the final corner we're actually on a pretty all right lap you can see nearly two tenths up on our best however through this final corner just didn't really push it you can see had a lot of time left on that final corner probably lost about a tenth and a half if we would have nailed it but we're probably even going to lose to the banker lap that we did on that final corner but it should be overall a little bit quicker because the first two sectors were pretty strong and we managed to go with a 14.2 now that ended up being our best lap of the session and ended up starting us in p3 for qualifying now i decided to change the setup from the qualifying to go a little bit safer was not too sure about how we were going to go how safe and i decided to go a little bit more aggressive and put it up to 39 37 on the damping expansion so you can see we changed that to 39 37 now we did change to the soft tire because we're starting from p3 it was too risky with four damage on in these races to go on the medium tires because the chances of getting damaged was just far too high so we play it safe here getting out pushing straight away using second gear to start always a good idea in the super formula especially when you use the boost to kick it in there obviously make the overtake button on this car gives you that little extra bit of speed so up into p2 straight away Somi didn't really get a great start there so he's probably on the medium tires and we knew that pretty much straight away i, I guess straight away that he'll be on the soft on the medium tire with how slow he pulled away but we got a good start putting ourselves straight up to p2 and no damage we did get a little bit of contact but no damage from that from Somi. so all good there on this start of this race and yeah after the first race where we picked up damage on lap one it's really nice just to get away and in a really good position here so now we've got to do it we've got to try and stay with max so that is what we've got to try and do here we've got to try and stay in his slipstream and we have to give huge credit to pd for the slipstream and the ability to follow with this custom slipstream because it wasn't too powerful on the straight yes you gained speed on the straight but it wasn't like you gained like remember the suzuka daily race it wasn't like that where you just gained stupid amounts of speed it was just a, a nice amount of um, extra gain on the straight. See, I'm using the boost there to get in the slipstream. And you were able to follow. This is what we've wanted for so long on Gran Turismo. And finally, we're starting to get it. They're actually listening after God knows how many years of everyone talking about it. But this was drivable. You can follow. You could sit behind the car. It was really, really nice to race. And yeah, credit to BD for actually listening after it took them a long time, like I say. But they have listened and they've used the custom slipstream for the race. So it's proof that we weren't making this up because now you can actually follow in these cars and these races are entertaining. You don't need the Suzuka slipstream that we had in the daily race where it was just exaggerated. This slipstream here is absolutely brilliant. We need this for group two, group one and super formal races. And now with this slipstream, we could be racing more combinations in daily races. So if anyone is at PD is listening, please start bringing this slipstream into daily races because it was so much more entertaining um, in these high downforce cars but you can see at the moment here we're managing to sit with maxo and our pace on the fresh soft tires was actually pretty strong at this stage you can see i'm managing to stay with him we're using a bit of boost up to get a bit of acceleration out of the corners on my where i know i'm weak i'm using that boost to try and make sure i stay with him to get back into that slipstream 
and at the moment it's working quite well. You can see we've built that gap up to 1.7 to Somi, but that isn't that great because we know that Somi was on the medium tyre, so at the moment we need to push a lot more and I think it was a bit of a scruffy lap, that first flying lap, but this lap now, Macto's going to start pushing a little bit more and we're going to have to use a bit of boost to try and get into that slipstream again. So you can see Somi behind us actually doing some really, really strong pace and you can see on the replay camera here, the gap between my, myself and Max are really, really close and then we've got Somi and another drive, Tommy behind him there, also probably on the soft tyres, staying with um, Somi who's on the medium tyres. So Somi at the moment is in the prime position in this race. He's doing really well. Good lap times on the mediums there. And we're doing pretty good, strong pace just following behind Max. So now we're not going to battle him. You might have seen into turn one. We chose not to battle him before because we don't really want to fight this. We want to play it sensible. Just sit behind and get as good a run as we can while we're on the soft tyres because I know that my weakest stint is on the medium so we need to try and get as much of a lead up as possible from the other cars in this race and you can actually see on the track map there is quite a big field spread going on between people on different tyres and different strategies it looks like people that have picked up damage are going for a two-stop strategy which just was not going to work at this combo because the pit lane loss is absolutely massive round here. We can see as we go over the line there, it's a little bit of a better lap from us. You can see Max at the 14.6 and now we know we're going to have to start pushing a little bit more. So trying to get a better lap in on this lap and by the time we get to the end of the lap, you're going to see that we're on a much better lap as we skip through, through to the end of lap four. And you can see the gap staying around seven, um, seven tenths of a second to Maxo and Somi 3.1 behind us. So not too bad at the moment. We go into the 14s, 14.8 pretty good lap for race pace at the start with full fuel now the advantage of obviously going on the soft tires at the start was you get a cleaner start however for your overall race pace it was quite a bit slower because the mediums you're going to use up with the heavy fuel and then you can go a lot longer on the soft tires and you can actually go an extra two two laps with good pace so overall it was probably three to four seconds quicker by doing the reverse strategy of starting on the mediums however the risk was just too high if you start on the mediums and someone hits you in the rear, it's race over, at least on the soft tyres, you guaranteed that good start. And you can see at the moment it's worked out perfectly for us, even though we know that this isn't overall the best strategy to do. It's really put us into a prime position here of just getting away, running our own race, and just trying to hang in with Max at the moment. Now we can see on lap six, we're still on that slipstream, still doing one minute 14 laps there on lap six, so going really, really well. This was really solid pace, better than I expected after our first practice sessions on this, because this car was really tricky to get used to. A lot of it was a setup, just figuring out what to do with that setup. And I found going very low on the first part of the dampers and higher on the second part really suited me a lot more than what some people were doing. They were going very low on both parts. Low on both parts felt a little bit too soft and spongy for me. I didn't really like it. I needed to still have that stiff feeling to the car where you can really chuck it in. So into the further part into the race now, we're on lap 12. And we're coming closer to the pit stop phase. You can see we've got a 6.2 second lead over Somi, which isn't really enough because he's on their medium tyres. He's going to gain massively when he goes for an undercut because he can pit early because he's going to have lower fuel by the time he pits. You can see our fuel at the moment coming up to nearly half a tank. So half a tank less fuel on soft tyres means your tyres are going to last a lot longer and they're going to be quicker as well. So it's going to be very, very difficult. And I think at this stage of the race, I kind of knew my battle was not with Somi. The battle here is just trying to hold on to a podium. P3, and it's a good result. We come away with over 300 points, and I'm happy. We can then move on to the next round. We can see that Maxo now is starting to pull away, and he's broke away from that slipstream, and that's mainly because of tyre wear. When tyre wear steam seems to kick in, my pace does drop quite considerably. I do struggle when the grip goes, because I need a really strong front end on the car, so maybe could have gone forward to the rear to give myself a little bit better front tyres, and give myself more confidence in turning the car in but yeah i just found i didn't want to the, the car was quite sketchy so we didn't really want to go too far to the rear on the brake by so plus three was working okay for us in general but you can see that gap up to nearly two seconds Somi up to 5.8 seconds so he is really starting to gain and now as we go to lap 13 you can see here gap to 5.8 still to Somi. he's doing really good pace on the mediums the mediums are actually starting to match the soft tires at this stage and we're 2.5 behind max over there you can see Somi off into the pits on lap 13. So he's actually gonna do 17 laps on the soft tires, which is not really gonna be possible for ourselves from here. So it's a bit of a different strategy and it is gonna work out the faster strategy to do. So you can see, we're gonna go over the line for another lap and you can see the times faded off a little bit there. Not a very good lap, bit of a scruffy lap there, lost half a second on lap 14. 
and now we're just going to have to try and get ourselves to the end of this lap as smoothly as possible without losing too much time. You can see the gap has gone to nearly three seconds to max us. We have a big moment on the curve there, nearly lost control, actually lost about six, seven tenths on the in-lap. So into the pits, 3.8 behind Maxo, no fuel, onto the medium tyre and now again we're just going to try and take it smooth. Now the good news is Tommy behind us was also on the soft tyres and he's going onto the medium tyres so we know now we're fighting for the podium, that's all we're fighting for, a P3. We're too far behind Maxo and I know my pace on these medium tyres is not going to be that great. I don't really have the confidence as I did on the soft tyres, especially with the fresh grip on them and you can see by the end of the outlap we're not going to fight Tommy here, he's going to go past us. It's not worth fighting him on soft tyres. It's really big advice to people. If you're on a different tyre compound, mediums versus soft, all you're going to do is lose your self pace. So we just let him go, sit behind him, get a bit of slipstream on the straight, and now just basically stay with him as long as we can, which isn't going to be very long because the soft tyre just has so much more grip through the corners, as you can see there. But we are going to get a bit of a benefit on this straight with a bit of slipstream. So we're going to skip now to lap 24, as the race was very dull for that part. You can see our lap times. We were doing 16.1, 2, 16 flat, 16, 1. We were taking it very easy. At this stage, we've got a seven second gap to P4. There's no need to take any risk because we've secured P3 as long as we keep this on the track and that's a good result for me. However, you might see that on the screen. Yellow flag overtaking is prohibited. Maxo has lost control of the car with a tiny bit of contact with Somi, I think it was when we checked the replay, and he's actually picked up possible damage. Now at this stage, we wasn't sure if he had damage or not. We can see that the gap is at 3.7, 3.8. Um, at this stage, you can see I'm not going to overdrive it yet because I'm, I don't really know whether it's worth risking it. If he hasn't picked up damage, it's best just to play this safe and go for the P3. So at, the, at this point, you can see we're gaining a little bit here and there, but then he's gaining again on the exits of corners. So it's quite hard to tell at this stage. I needed to wait for the straight. So as soon as we got onto this straight, this is where I'm looking to see on the delta. On the exit, he's actually going to gain a little bit, but that's not the part of the track that I need to look at. It's once we get into fifth and sixth gear. If he starts losing pace in them gears, in that speed, then we know that he has got damage. And as you can see there, the delta is dropping quite significantly. And I know now that he's 100% got damage. So you can see our pace has gone from 16.1, 16.2, 16.0, 16.1, 16.3 on that lap. And now we're going to have to start pushing and try and get this pace up to try and catch up to Max. So you can see, this is what I'm talking about. When you know you've got a chance of an opportunity, it's worth risking it. And now we're going to increase our pace and we're going to go straight into the 15.8. So instantly half a second quicker over the previous lap. And it does show you how much we were holding back really to just preserve that P3. And that was a sensible thing to really do at this stage of race because we had seven seconds over P4. There was no real fight going on there. We weren't going to catch the leaders up. Again, 15.9. So again, four times quicker than them other laps. And again, we're going to go even faster as well as we start pushing. You can see it's starting a little bit more aggressive now. We can see that gap has come down to two seconds to Maxo. And the quick, the nearer he got, the more motivation I got to push a little bit harder, a little bit more aggressive, and really try and push the limits on these medium tyres. And you can see we actually go over with a 15.4, which if you compare that to lap 24, is nine tenths quicker and it, it does highlight when you know you've got a chance of an opportunity how much more aggressive you can drive the, the pace was there on the mediums if I wanted to use it and now we are starting to use that we're into the slipstream we've got a few laps to go we know he's wounded we know that his car has got damage and we know a potential p2 is possible in this race let's see if we can manage to get into that slipstream and get a pass on him we know if we get near to him on the straight we know we're going to get an easy pass because he won't have the top end. And I do have a little bit of boost left. You can see in that bottom right-hand corner, we have a little bit of boost left to use. Now we're getting incredibly close here. Seven temps away, keeping it nice and smooth through these corners. Just trying to get as close as we can. We're going to try and get this move done before the end. We've got a few laps to do this, so there's no massive rush in getting this overtake done. It's just about taking it easy and picking our opportunity. So again, in that set stream, Onto the final corner, Max is going to really push it on this final corner. You can see there, get right up to the curb, almost losing control, trying to make sure that we don't get close enough. Now here, we're going to get the slipstream, you can see, and I'm not going to use the boost that I've got because I don't need to. I'm going to save that for when I need to use it. And you can see here, we're just going to pick up that slipstream, get within half a second of him, try and get a good exit off this turn one and turn two, and see how close we can get before the end of the straight. You can see, on the replay camera now just how close this race has developed and it's actually quite an exciting end this was 100 concentration now 100 pushing pretty much 
you know, we were close to my limit of the pace, doing 15.4s, 15, 15, you know, the low 15s on the mediums. That was close to the limit of what I could do without being, you know, risking crashing. And at the moment, it's going quite well. We're driving well. We're having a little look here. We're going to have a little look to the left-hand side there. You can see there, just trying to use that track to see if we can just put a move on him. But does actually stay on the track reasonably well and keep his position really well through this section and that's one thing we learned when we had damage similar damage to the rear is through the corners it wasn't terrible it was a little bit slower it's mainly on acceleration and on the top speed where the car just doesn't have that ability so through here he's able to hold on and now we're in a prime position going into the final lap we just got to get this move done on this straight with his damage it should be a simple pass so we've got a little bit of boost use if i need it but I don't think we're going to have to use it here. You can see, getting that slipstream into sixth gear, and I'm going to save the boost. You can see we're not going to use that boost because I know in sixth gear, his car just won't have the acceleration. So going into turn one, he's going to get as close as he can and try and get the slipstream for this straight and maybe use any boost that he's got left to try and get back past us. So now is when we're going to use some of that boost that we've got left. So keep an eye on that boost, the overtake button. We're using it there to get the exit out of the corner and now we're gonna go into the braking zone and you see we're safe into P2 and holding on at the moment. Just got a few more corners to try and hold on to this position and this will be a brilliant result to be honest. We obviously got a little bit lucky. Um, we were driving it probably overly safe but we didn't need to push. You can see you know, the improvement in pace once we started to push was there. So now we just gotta try and keep it nice and smooth through these corners. Make sure we don't make any mistakes. Up to third gear early just be careful on the throttle there it nearly went on us there and now into these slow corners again up to third gear to be safe still got a little bit of boost if we need it if he manages to get in the slipstream but he's going to find it pretty much impossible to overtake us with that damage he just won't have the pace and you can see coming out the final corner and now working our way up the main straight and it looks like we're going to take a very well earned p2 i was really really happy with this we definitely could have gone quicker we know probably with the strategy as well starting on the mediums would have been the quicker way and obviously we had more pace on the mediums we weren't using the pace for like six laps or so six or seven laps just taking it very easy so there was a lot more pace available and that we definitely could have gone five six seconds quicker but overall we've come away with a p2 and very very happy with that result as well no way we were catching Somi up he was too quick here and we come away with p2 starting from p3 getting the position and some very very nice points we actually walk away with 300 and 53 points so very nice day in nations if you enjoyed that video hit the like button subscribe to the channel let me know in the comment section how your race went and i'll see you all again for more videos and live streams thanks again for watching everyone